Hello YouTube, this is Zach. It has been quite some time since I have made any kind of a vocal analysis video. You've seen me do a few things, do a couple little shorts, maybe you've seen me stream on Twitch, maybe you've heard me give some general commentary, maybe you watched me do a voice lesson. But it has been a long time since I did a proper vocal analysis and I'm coming back with some truth. And I have quite a bit to talk about, so if uh, you just want to get straight to the reaction, uh, well, reaction, the analysis, this is not a reaction, I strongly suggest you be a little bit patient and let me have the floor, let me have the microphone for a minute or two, let me have your attention for a bit. We live in a post-truth society. A post-truth society is one in which people are conditioned into believing that everything that they see in here is the truth. And we aren't really taught to critically think or to analyze beyond what we see on the surface. Why is that relevant here? Well, this video is going to be an analysis of David Draymond singing The Sound of Silence, acting as Disturbed on Conan O'Brien. However, there is a much bigger issue that I want to address as a result of this video. And I understand that this is going to get me a lot of flack. And I understand that there are going to be people that are not going to be very happy about what I have to say. That's okay, that is your prerogative. But I implore you to please give me a moment of fairness and to hear me out. The online vocal coach spheres have been tenuous for a long time. Part of the reason that I disappeared off the platform was because of the backlash that I received from the vocal education community. I only ever came here with the intention of trying to be truthful and honest and to give the best feedback and best insight that I can for future singers who are looking to further develop their craft. Little did I know what I was getting myself into. And through doing this, I have found that the vast majority of this platform consists of people who just want to be entertained. And I understand that if you clicked on this expecting a reaction video, you're wanting someone just to stand here and go, oh yeah, great performance, great this, awesome that, good job, this is amazing. You're not gonna get that from me. So if that's what you're expecting, I would just go ahead and click away, downvote it. By the way, if you downvote my video, I appreciate it because it helps me in the algorithm. So you know, please feel free to just to bash on this all you want. Tell me how much you hate what I have to say. It's very Orwellian of you. In a society of deceit, Truth is a revolutionary act. Now, that quote has been attributed to Orwell, but the truth is that Orwell probably didn't really say it, and it probably started back in the 1910s, somewhere around in there, in like, like 1918, 1919. But the concept rings true. We're in a world in which talking about the truth of some of these matters gets you in more trouble than accepting the falsehood. I have not seen any voice teachers be honest about this performance. I know that one teacher tried to several years back and was lambasted by the fan base and by the community. That's shameful. Humans are humans for a reason. We are imperfect creatures. We all make mistakes. I make mistakes. You make mistakes. David Draymond makes mistakes. The difference is that when we are on a platform that allows us to edit and change what we say, we can make it sound however you want. Every single cut of this video you're watching of me is where I have either said something twice or the wrong word came out or I had to think for a minute before I started talking. But all you see is the finished product. I edit out the little spaces between my talking so that you don't have to see, I just did it, I just made a mistake, right? You don't have to sit here and see me stumble, stumble over my words. You don't have to see me sitting here going, hmm, how do I make this next statement? How do I say this the way that I want to? You don't have to see that because it would otherwise disrupt the flow of my performance, my presentation, whatever you want to call it. That's fine because I'm doing this for the sake of using as much brevity as I can, even though this is a long form video. Now, that is not because I'm trying to make you believe that I have a message that I don't really have, or I'm trying to manipulate my own words. When we talk about professional performances like these that are recorded, they are trying to remove the humanity from them. They want them to seem as pristine and perfect as they actually can. This is done for all sorts of reasons. It can be because the producers don't want the audiences to get a bad impression of the singer. It could be that they're under pressure from the singer to fix some mistakes. It could have been that the singer was having a bad day and hated how they sounded and wanted to fix it. Either way, so many performances that you see that are put on video that are 
professionally recorded are fake. And yes, the sound of silence by Disturbed on Conan O'Brien is largely fake. I cannot speak to the orchestration. I cannot speak to the instruments, playing the instruments. I cannot speak to them, but I can tell you with certainty that David Draymond's performance is either overdubbed or it has been completely edited down to almost a robotic degree in post-production. That's not a very popular thing to say, and I know that I'm going to get a lot of hate for it, but if you hate me for it, you are a truth denier. And I am going to not only show you why that's the truth, I also have someone who has been willing to offer professional-level commentary on the pitch correction. But here's the thing. This person is of very high repute in the music community, in the production community. They have produced major hit singles on streaming platforms that there's a chance you may have heard before. And some of these have tens of millions of views on YouTube alone. This person has worked with some huge names in the recording industry, but they don't even want to say who they are out of anonymity because they're afraid of people like you watching this, that the backlash that you might cause out of your anger to these things being exposed would hurt this person's career. Now, what kind of culture, what kind of society do we live in when people who are educated and professionals in these subjects can't even speak truth without being attacked? What does that say? So I know that there are masses of you out there who are just chomping at the bit to tear me down and to tear anyone down who has negative commentary on the song because it's your favorite or it sounds good. Who cares? It sounds good. It sounds good because it's not real. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you why this isn't real. I am a professional voice teacher. I am not some online vocal coach that just says whatever people want to hear and that's how I get my 500,000 subscribers. That's not me. There are plenty of those out there. That is not me. That's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to teach you. And I actually teach for a living. I'm not a content creator for a living. I teach for a living. I've been teaching for a living for years and years. And I've been studying voice since I was 17 years old. And I turn 36 in two weeks. I am an actual vocal education professional. This is my job. And I'm going to tell you how this is not real. And I'm going to show you the things that he's doing in comparison to the sounds that he's creating. And I'm going to show you how they don't work. They don't link up. So with that in mind, this is Disturbed performing The Sound of Silence on Conan O'Brien. And I'm analyzing this from the perspective of showing you how the performance is deceptive and how it is not based on truth or reality and how the actual presentation of the performance could have gone any kind of way. Darkness, my own friend. Nothing notable here yet. I've come to talk with you again. This all up to this point could have feasibly been real. There's nothing egregious at this point. From a singing technique perspective, I'm not a big fan of when you use words like again, you go again. Because when you really lean on the N, you're sending all the resonance into your nose. And since the pharynx is broken into the nasopharynx and the oropharynx, if you just lean on the nasal sound, you're basically cutting the oropharynx out as a resonator, which means that the sound doesn't really go into the mouth and get a chance to resonate. So I don't really like leaning on the end sound too much. But as far as up to this point, there's been nothing egregious, nothing unhealthy, nothing like that. Because a vision softly creeping Left it seems while I was sleeping That could have been pitch correction here. I'm not sure. Uh, this little moment. Uh, this is not an egregious example, but it could have been. I was sleeping. Right there. Was, was. That could have been pitch correction. Maybe, maybe not. Don't know. It's not obvious at this point. Um, so far, his approach, he's singing on the voice using modal register. Uh, pretty basic, simple approach. Sounds kind of speech-like. Pretty sustainable singing sound. Not too bad. By the way, if you've never watched my content before, I base my entire analysis, my entire philosophy of all of this is about vocal health, vocal sustainability, vocal hygiene, singing in ways that are good for your voice in the long term that aren't going to destroy your voice. So I'm not a big fan of using vocal effects. Like he's going to use the raspy stuff later and I have opinions on that and um, I'm not a big fan of that kind of thing. Not, not in terms of the aesthetic, but the effect that it has on the voice. And all my commentary is based on giving you ideas of 
things that you can do to preserve your voice for as long as you can. That note may have been tuned. Vision. It might have been tuned because it sounded awfully thin and straight. I don't know yet. That was planted in my brain. So here's an interesting thing. If you look at the word brain, when he sings brain, look at his mouth. Look at his mouth. My brain. See how the mouth opens for brain after the br the sound is made? Take a look. My brain. See that? It's subtle, but that suggests that the word brain was overdubbed. Don't know for sure, but it's just a little piece of evidence. Still remains within the sound. The problem with the way that he did within the sound is he mumbled it. Like the, the text did not have the clarity that it needs to be able to enunciate. He went within the sound, right? So what he did is he took resonance away. Anytime you close the mouth on a vowel, you're robbing resonance from, from coming out. Within the sound, within the sound. You hear the difference between the two? The difference is that because I enunciated, you can hear more resonance. You get more sound from the voice. When you keep your lips closed and you just mumble, the audience doesn't get to hear the entirety of your singing sound. Oh, of silence. So of silence, again, of silence. If you do silence and you sing it like that with an of uh vowel, you get resonance. So if you go silence, you just get like a humming mm sound. There's no resonance there. That You're robbing the audience of what they paid to see. In restless streams I walked alone. It's fine. Narrow streets of cobblestone Beneath the halo of a street light See, that was suspicious sounding to me. I, I, I don't know because I can't see him. And that's going to be a common theme here pretty soon too is that a lot of times on these sort of questionable parts you can't see him. And I imagine that they do that because people like me could come in and say, hey, that's not exactly right. Uh, I turn my collar to the cold and down When my eyes were stared by the flash of a neon light Yeah, this whole recording has this thin metallic kind of undertone to it. And it just sounds extremely artificial. Um... Again, give me some time and there will be some clear examples of this. But what the, my impression as a voice teacher if, is that this isn't real. I have students come to me all the time. And, or, well, potential, I, I'm sorry. I have potential students come to me all the time and they'll say, hey, can you analyze my singing and tell me what I'm doing wrong? And they'll send me a recording that sounds like this. And it's produced and it's pitch corrected and it's very metallic sounding, very robotic sounding. And I say, I tell them the same thing. I can't analyze this. I can't analyze it because it's not a true indication of the singer that you are. And as a voice teacher, we have to look at a lot of different criteria to be able to determine the state of someone's voice. If someone is not consistently in tune, there are multitudes of reasons for that. It could be breath management. It could be poor audiation skills. It could be too much intention. It, it, we don't know, right? So if I don't get an accurate representation of what the voice sounds like, I can't analyze it from an educational and productive perspective. Sure, I could sit here and take this on the surface and say, wow, it's all perfect perfectly in tune. Wow, he sounds great. Wow, it's so good. But that doesn't mean that anything is true. That doesn't mean that what I'm saying is true. It doesn't mean that, that the presentation that I'm responding to is true. And I think that that's something that so many people have lost sight of. This is not real. Trust me, you'll see uh, very soon. It's split in the night and touch the sound. Up here is a big one. Oh, silence. And in the naked light eye. Right there. Light eye. Light eye. That little grace note was pitch corrected. You can hear the bend. In the naked light eye. That's pitch correction. That is that is 100% absolute pitch correction there. So, another thing to point out here is, look, it doesn't show his face. You can't see his face. I wonder why that is. Mm, maybe if you could see his face when you're doing it, you could tell that 
the way that his mouth shapes or the way that his embouchure changes doesn't match the pitch change. Maybe you could see that something went wrong and they fixed it. It's not real. So this is the first clear example of pitch correction. That pitch correction comes from not the ability to move the move pitches, because I can go, la da, anybody can do that. It's not the motion. It's the way that you hear the pitch step. Ba-da, da-da. It does this like robotic move downward. Listen one more time to it. It has that, uh, that little edge that sounds like it's more like a keyboard being played. That is a sign of Melodyne. To give you some perspective here, what I've done is I've talked to a colleague of mine who's a professional audio and music engineer who has been responsible for some world famous music hits. And this person has agreed on the condition of anonymity to auto-tune my voice. So what I've done is I've taken this same clip and I've lowered the key a little bit so it fits into my range and I've deliberately slid and glissandoed some of the pitches so that you can hear what it sounds like. And what you're basically going to see here is a combination of things. First off, the engineer is going to let you hear the raw audio. Then what will happen is you will hear a, a small adjustment on the speed of the auto-tune so that you can hear what it sounds like with very little auto-tune on the track. Then you're going to hear it with a more increased amount of auto-tune, and then you'll hear what is sort of an in-the-middle adjusted sound so that you can see what it will sound like if they auto-tune this track of mine. People writing songs that voices never shared, no one dared. People writing songs that voices never shared, no one dared. People writing songs that voices never shared, no one dared. People writing songs that voices never shared. People writing songs that voices never shared, no one dared. Now I know that all you crazy hyena fans are going to go nuts that I said that that's pitch correction. I had to do this with this individual staying quiet and not saying anything while editing this so that there is no indication of who this person is because the rabid masses of people that are fans of this could potentially cost this person their career if the wrong opinion is stated by the wrong person. And this person has a professional reputation to uphold. But this person has built songs using autotune through basically the whole thing, through pitch correction, so that you can hear how these artifacts sound when they're created, so that you can understand that this is pitch corrected. This is auto-tuned, pitch corrected, whatever, Nectar, Melodyne, whatever program they use, it's fake. This is fake. And I'm not trying to burst your bubble, I'm trying to tell you the truth. If that wasn't obvious enough for you, I want to clarify why this is so important. Since we are in a post-truth society, you are being conditioned to hear things and have expectations that aren't real. And they also know that you will never be at this performance, so you will never know exactly what it sounded like. There's also a possibility that this was completely pre-recorded. And I know that this happens because I know people that have been on television shows that recorded the performance before the performance was ever even put on the television show. And when it came time for the television show to put the performance on there, they just played a video clip of this group that had already recorded before the show started. Just because you hear a live audience doesn't even mean it's real. And I'm not saying this is 100% true. I don't know. But what I'm telling you is that because of the way that television presents this to us, we don't know what is real and what is not. And there's no conclusive way to. I can tell you you for sure that these things are pitch corrected. I can tell you for sure that it's auto-tuned, but I can't tell you if the performance is even really done in front of a live audience or not. I don't know. Who knows? We may never know. That's not the point. The point is that we're in this culture where it's kind of promoted that we don't know the truth, that we're encouraged to not really critically think about this. The public is kind of 
developing this expectation of a certain sound and the humanity of the voice is being destroyed as a result of it. I looked through the comments section of this video and everyone was like, this is the most incredible performance I've ever heard in my life. It's not real. It's not real. This performance is not real. This is not the most incredible performance you've ever heard in your life. This may be the most incredible production you've ever heard in your life, but this is not the most incredible performance you've ever heard in your life because you're not hearing the performance. You're seeing a video with something doctored over the top of it to be a facsimile of a performance. So there is no way that you can say that this is the best performance you've ever heard because you didn't hear it. The problem here is that for people like me who actually teach singers to sing, we have it very hard because people want to create this sound. And when the student doesn't create this kind of sound, the teacher is judged as a failure or the teacher is looked at as incompetent. Or the singers go out and they go, wow, this person is getting voice lessons. They're not that good. But the reason that people say that from the audience perspective is that our ears are being tuned to expect this. It's a serious problem. I can't teach people to sing this perfectly because humans can't sing this perfectly. You just, you just can't. And so what we start seeing is singers compensating for the lack of this degree of perfection by using techniques that are potentially harmful to the voice to try to force certain notes or to create certain timbres and sounds. If you try to recreate the sound that he's making here, you're going to sound like a robot. The only way you can make any attempt to sound like him is by changing the timbre of your voice to fit this. But this timbre has been obviously impacted by a machine. So how do you make a machine like timbre? Can you? Is it possible? Probably not. So this entire video has set up a false, improper expectation of the audience. You. I don't like playing the victim card. But you, the listener, the people who like this so much are victims of this. You are a victim of this. You've been duped. The wool has been pulled over your eyes. You've been deceived. This is a lie. I would not be surprised if I did not get takedown requests over this because these people so aggressively want to perpetuate this lie, this falsehood, this fakeness. This is fake. And if you have to come after me because you're angry, that's your problem. I know that fans are irrational. I've seen it since I started my channel. I have been attacked by so many fan bases because I speak facts, because I speak truth, because I talk about anatomy, I talk about physiology, and I'm telling you the truth when I say that I can't even analyze this because this isn't real. Voices never share, no one dare. Notice how many of these shots don't even show his mouth. They do that on purpose because when you go back and look like I showed earlier, Sometimes the overdub or whatever it is makes it to where you can't even, the, the voice doesn't even line up. So there's no way to be able to even accurately interpret this. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, why are you doing this video? I'm doing this video because I need you to see that most of this type of reaction content that you see on the internet these days is based off of performances that aren't even real. It's very easy for voice teachers on YouTube to say, oh, this is so amazing, it's so perfect, and the fans love it because it's been doctored and perfected in studio so that the voice teachers have nothing but good things to say. It's this symbiotic, like, you scratch my back, I scratch yours type thing to where, you know, they know that the critiques are basically all going to be positive because there's nothing to critique because I can't tangibly tell you anything he's doing wrong. All I can do is show you that this is fake and processed. Disturb the sound of silence. I have no way of knowing if we'll anything say he did. Was you right. do not know. Silence like a cancer grows. Hear my words and I'm a high teacher. You so even if that is a real sound, okay? Even if this is real, if you hear that if you make that sound and you touch the bottom of your jaw, you touch underneath here, you will feel the bottom of your tongue clenching up, okay? So if he is singing this on, if this is his real voice singing it, he is engaging in extreme tension of the bottom of the tongue of this whole section. This is not good. This is not good because the tongue 
connects all the way down here to the top of the larynx, which is right here. And so if this is really tightly engaged, the larynx is gonna be tight too. There's not gonna be able to freely move because the muscles will be occupied holding that tongue in place when you make that kind of sound, right? But since it's all perfectly in tune, I'm just a hater, right? I'm just a hater, I'm just a hater. Just call me a hater because I'm just a hater. Clearly, I don't know what I'm talking about, I'm just a hater. Remember, I'm always, I'm always wrong, I'm just a hater. I just can't stand the fact that David Draymond is on stage and I'm not. I, I, I loathe myself and my own existence because he's famous and I'm not. Just please, just remind me of that in the comments, please, because I need to know more how much I hate myself because I'm pointing out that he has excessive tongue tension that's being covered up by pitch correction. I'm such a miserable human being. Thanks, I know, I needed that. That was pitch correction. That was an edit. Of silence and the people bowed and prayed. Okay, this is egregious. Prayed to make an aval. Prayed. You have to arch your tongue in the back. Hey. Okay. I want you to look at his tongue. His tongue is flat. Prayed. Okay, this does not represent what he's actually doing. You can visually see it. Try it for yourself. Say the vowel A, A, A. Pay attention to what your tongue does. It's going to go A, A, A. It's going to go like that. Look at his tongue. It's flat. So what this means is it's a very high likelihood that the, the word prayed was recorded separately and you're not actually seeing what he did. It's very, very, very likely. Go back and listen to it again. And the people bowed and prayed. You see that? See how much space is there and the tongue is down? There's a very good chance that this isn't real. Eight, you listen to all that reverb and all that that delay on the sound. Eight, two, that, you hear it? Eight, to the neon god they made. Oh, and you can hear the in the middle of the word made, it's it, you can hear an artifact in there. Listen. Right there, it almost sounds like the note restarts a little bit. That that's an artifact of some kind, or it could have been a splice. I don't know. But it's not real. It's not real. This cannot be analyzed from the perspective of a voice teacher because it's not real. So I'm telling you as a voice teacher, do not look at this from the perspective of an idealized singing performance because it's not. And the sign lashed out in its warning. And the words that it was forming. And the sign said the words of the prophets are written on the subway walls in tenement halls. I wish this were real. It's. If I went through this note by note, you would have already turned the video off by now because I'd literally be like, this is fake, this is fake, this is fake. It's so fake. Some of the it's clearly been post-processed. It's got tons of EQ, tons of reverb, tons of compression. These things that you just can't get live. I mean, you can, but not to this degree of precision. It's so controlled, the way that it sounds. I mean, even if he sung it this way, look at all this facial tension. He's literally doing this midnight. Like that's that's literally what he's doing with his face. It's it's there's no way that he's gonna get the kind of clarity and precision on the sound by tightening up like he did. It's just not possible. The subway walls in tenement halls. Did the S cut up late there? No. Okay. Whisper. Listen to how mechanical that vibrato sounds. It sounds it sounds mechanical. It sounds like a machine. That's what a real vibrato sounds like. Listen to this one. Listen again. That 
that's a mechanical sounding vibrato. So that that could mean a couple of things. They could have straightened out the vibrato in post production. It could have been a real vibrato there, and they straightened it out, or they could have done something to make it have a vibrato like effect. But that is not the natural sound of a vibrato. I work with students all the time. I know what vibrato sounds like. That's not a vibrato sound. Of silence. Even that note. Even that note has an artifact on it. Listen. Of right there. That's that's a, that's a pitch correction artifact. Of yeah, it, that's an artifact. That's pitch correction. It's all even at the very end of it. Silence. And he still does the. He still does the silence. <laughs> I mean, you know, maybe there are things about this that are partially real. Maybe this is half real, half not. But hopefully I've given you some clear examples of how this performance is studio fakery. Um, I've read a few things saying that he was ill the day of this performance. That's always the excuse, right? Oh, I was having a bad vocal day. You know, I had bad vocal days when I was in college and I had to do performances anyway. I got an imp uh, uh, a recording that I let some of my students hear of myself singing when I had a sinus infection and a fever of 102. sung anyway and it's not great but I had to go out and do it and I didn't get to have the I didn't get to have the the comfortable cushion of pitch correction and auto tune to back me up because my voice was in bad shape so even if he did have a cold even if he wasn't in great voice it doesn't justify overcorrecting a performance to the point to where it deceives people in its quality that there is no real way to know how good this performance actually was and I know that this is going to draw the ire of so many people. I know so many of you are going to be mad. But I think it's just a coping mechanism. I really do. Music is designed to be entertaining. I understand that. And you want to be entertained. But at what point is there a threshold of how much entertainment you can have and you can accept the degree of deception that you feel and that you experience? One of my favorite movies of all time, it probably is my favorite movie of all time, is, is called Network. Um, by Patty Chayefsky. Um, it and uh, it is as Faye Dunaway, William Holden, Peter Finch. It's an incredible movie, and I want to leave you with a little quote from it, a little snippet from the movie. And this is already going to get copyright struck, probably. So I'm going to leave you with a little snippet of the movie, and I want you to really think about what it's saying, and I want you to consider that in our current culture, we have become so inundated and indoctrinated with falseness, with fakeness, with things that aren't real, that we want it. We want the fake. So you listen to me. Listen to me. Television is not the truth. Television is a goddamn amusement park. Television is a circus, a carnival, a traveling troupe of acrobats, storytellers, dancers, singers, jugglers, sideshow freaks, lion tamers, and football players. We're in the boredom-killing business. So if you want the truth, go to God. Go to your gurus. Go to yourselves, because that's the only place you're ever going to find any real truth. But man, you're never going to get any truth from us. We'll tell you anything you want to hear. We lie like hell. We'll tell you that uh, Kojak always gets the killer and that nobody ever gets cancer in Archie Bunker's house. And no matter how much trouble the hero is in, don't worry, just look at your watch. At the end of the hour, he's going to win. We'll tell you any shit you want to hear. We deal in illusions, man. None of it is true. But you people sit there day after day, night after night, all ages, colors, creeds. We're all you know. You're beginning to believe the illusions we're spinning here. You're beginning to think that the tube is reality and that your own lives are unreal. You do whatever the tube tells you. You dress like the tube. You ate like the tube. You raise your children like the tube. You even think like the tube. This is mass madness, you maniacs. In God's name, you people are the real thing. We are the illusion. So turn off your television sets. Turn them off now. Turn them off right now. Yeah. 
It's funny that he called television the tube, and now we're talking about YouTube 40, 50 years later. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope this gives you something to think on. The videos of your favorite singers that you see on the internet, for the most part, are not real. You are all being propagandized and encouraged to believe in something that is fake. And it's happening so that you can be the best little consumer that the industry can create. Because if you don't know the difference, then your wallet will never reflect that. But if you can show and you can prove that the things that you're being given and told and fed are fake, you'll be far less inclined to spend your money on it. So the better the illusion they can create, the bigger their pockets will be. See you all soon. Like and subscribe.